Hello Avid followers, welcome back to the channel. In today's news, President Donald Trump referred to his former UN ambassador Nikki Haley as a cunt, even as Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump wanted her on the 2020 presidential ticket instead of Mike Pence, a new book claims. John Bolton, the president's former national security advisor, reveals the details in his forthcoming book, The Room Where It Happened, a White House memoir, a copy of which was obtained by DailyMail.com and a clash over its publication. Bolton recalled a time in the Oval Office with the president who complained about how much he disliked the then Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. During the conversation, Bolton claims Trump told him about a dinner the president had with Haley and Tillerson, where Trump alleged it was Tillerson that called her a cunt. The president claimed Tillerson said to Haley, you're nothing but a cunt and don't ever forget it. Bolton admitted in his memoir that he wondered if Tillerson actually said it, noting that in the most administrations such a remark would have gotten some person fired. And if he hadn't, why did Trump tell me he had, Bolton wrote. Bolton became Trump's national security advisor in April 2018 and left in September 2019. Trump claims he fired him, but Bolton claims he left over policy differences on several issues, including the Iraq, Afghanistan and Ukraine. His book is the subject of an ongoing legal battle. The Justice Department sued him for, to stop its publication, claiming it has classified information. Bolton's lawyer says it does not and noted it went through the government review process required by someone who served in Bolton's position. Haley, who is Indian American, became a rising star in the Republican Party when she was elected governor of South Carolina in 2010. Trump named her as his pick to represent the United States for the UN shortly after he won his 2016 election. She was quickly and easily confirmed by the Senate, 96-4, but left the job on December 31, 2018. She outlasted Tillerson, however, whom Trump fired in March 2018. Haley announced, To much surprise and fanfare in October 2018, she would leave her plum post at the end of the year, a pronouncement made in a pomp in circumstance in the Oval Office meeting. At the time, Haley lavished praise on Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, the president's daughter and son-in-law, who serves as advisors in the West Wing and are power center in the Trump administration. I can, can't say enough good things about Jared and Ivanka, Haley said at the time of the couple, who were considered her biggest allies in the White House. Jared is such a hidden genius that no one understands, Haley gushed, citing his work on the renegotiating NAFTA and his various trade deals. Ivanka has just been a great friend, Haley added. She said the couple do more behind the scenes in the Trump administration than people realize, although she did not offer specific examples. They do a lot of things behind the scenes that I wish more people knew about because we are a better country because they're in the administration, Haley said. But there could be more to the optics than Haley thank thanking her friends. Bolton reveals in his book that Ivanka and Kushner wanted to jettison Vice President Mike Pence from the 2020 ticket and replace him with Haley. He reveals Trump asked him about the idea around the holidays in 2018 as Haley was wrapping up her tenure in New York at the UN headquarters. Trump also raised the widespread political rumor he would dump Pence from the ticket 2020 and run instead of Haley, asking what I thought, Bolton wrote. White House gossip was common that Ivanka and Kushner favored this approach, which tied in with Haley's leaving her position in the UN ambassador in December 2018, thus allowing her to do some politicking around the country before being named the ticket in 2020. The pros were seen as Haley would bring women to Trump's side. The cons were he would lose the party's evangelical base who supposed Pence. Bolton writes he told Trump it was a bad idea to jettison someone loyal and that doing so risked alienating people he needed, who could stay home even if they didn't vote for Trump's opponent, without necessarily generating new support because of the replacement. He also said of Haley's departure from the administration, Few doubted the 2024 race for the Republican presidential nomination had begun now. Bolton's look is the first memoir from a high-ranking official in the Trump administration and is from an official with longtime conservative credentials who served as a commenter on Fox News. The New York Times called it a withering portrait of a president ignorant of even basic facts about the world, susceptible to transparent flattery by author authoritarian leaders, manipulating him and 
prone to false statements, foul-mouthed eruptions, and snap decisions that aides tried to manage or reverse in its review. And the Washington Post called it, calls it the most substantive crit critical dissection of a president from an administration insider so far. Bolton reveals his frustrations with the president's daughter and son-in-law in the book, it, and it just wasn't him. He claims then Chief of Staff John Kelly and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo also had their frustrations with the couple. He claims Pompeo said to him they had to stay on because they were the real warriors. The words came when Kelly was frustrated and considering leaving the administration. Pompeo told him that then Defense Secretary Jim Mattis is always overseas and the only thing Treasury Secretary Steve Munchkin thinks about is covering his ass. This will just leave you and me, Pompeo said, worried Kelly would leave. If Trump wants to know who the real warriors are, just look around, meaning us, and Kelly is part of that. Pompeo added, this whole thing could end up being the Donald Ivanka and Jared show. Kelly left the White House in January 2019 and has become a vocal critic of the president since then. Bolton recalls how he learned Kushner was going to be calling the finance minister of Turkey because they were both son-in-laws to their country's respective leaders. He noted what happened when he told Pompeo and Munchkin of what he learned. I briefed Pompeo and Munchkin on, Munchen on this new son-in-law channel and they both exploded, he wrote. Munchen was angry because Kushner was reaching out to his Turkish counterpart and Pompeo was because this was one of more, more examples of Kushner's doing international negotiations he shouldn't have been doing, along with a never quite ready Middle East peace plan. He also recalled Kelly had his battles with Kushner when President Trump was furious how the numbers of illegal immigrants crossing into the United States hadn't gone down, Kelly learned Kushner called Mexicans officials. Why is Jared calling Mexicans? Kelly asked Trump, because I asked him to. How else are we going to stop the caravans? The president responded. Bolton also revealed how Trump protected his daughter when she came under fire for using her personal email for official business, which is a violation of the Presidential Records Act. He claims in his book that Trump defended Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman over the killing of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi to distract from the Ivanka story. This will divert from Ivanka, Trump said of his statement. If I read the statement in person, that will take over the Ivanka thing. He also revealed the president wasn't happy with what his daughter did. God damn it, why didn't she change her phone? What a mess we have because of that phone, he recalls Trump saying. That is all for today's news. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next video.